Damascus Gear Operation Tokyo HD. Rolls right off the tongue, doesn't it? Anyways, the PC is suffering from a severe lack of mech games, unlike its console counterparts. Outside of MechWarrior Online and Hawken, there really isn't anything on PC, especially if you're looking for a good single player campaign. This brings us to Arc System Works and their latest title, which is actually a PS Vita title from 2013 ported to the PC for only $15 on Steam. Maybe now the void can be filled and my life will be complete. Well, maybe not the latter, but the former is a strong possibility. The game plays from an isometric perspective, reminiscent of almost every old school RPG from the late 90s. In fact, the best way to describe the game is taking Diablo and mixing it up with Armor Core. Speaking of Armor Core, I will have a counter right over here. That'll go up every time Armor Core is mentioned. Got it? Good. Let's continue with the review. Instead of loot drops of swords, axes, bows, and armor, the enemy drops pieces for your gear to customize. Each item has its own stats while some have unique buffs such as an increased resistance to acid or a higher attack bonus. This makes it all the more worth it to replay missions for better parts. However, finding them off of enemies isn't the only way to get parts. Parts can also be bought, but they tend to be worse than what you already have. So you end up with a ton of money like you were selling enchanted jewelry in Skyrim. Yeah, I know, not an Armor Core reference, but I've been playing Skyrim a lot lately, so it's staying here. The customization is well done. It reminds me of the original Armor Core for the PS1, as it is easy to understand without becoming too bogged down in stats like the later entries have. You got your head, your chest, your leg, your arms, and your weapons. While you can try to mix and match to your heart's content, you need to be mindful of your power meter. Each part uses a certain amount of power. When the power is above a certain amount, the gear is unusable until you lower the power. It might seem like an arbitrary limit to some, but it works well in the context of the game. The action is fast paced and loud with a variety of weapons at your disposal. Each weapon is mapped to a certain key on the keyboard. It's very satisfying blasting your foes with a laser rifle, only to follow up with a strong slash of the sword and a laser cannon of death to clean it up. While you don't have full 360 analog control, movement feels fluid and responsive. Boosting in and out of danger is easy enough to perform as well. The missions are varied throughout the campaign. You start with rank E and unlock new missions as you complete them. Some involve you to defeat certain types of gears, defeating all enemies, reaching a destination, collecting items, and even arena combat. These are some of my favorite missions and remind me of Armor Core Master of Arena. It's just you and your opponent. No distractions. For the early goings, the game is easy, but definitely becomes a challenge later on. This is when selecting your parts and being tactical in your execution becomes vital. The most challenging missions I found to be are the ones where you need to destroy a powerful gear known as rage units. These take a crap ton of hits and can destroy yours in just a few. You need to be light on your feet and attack only when an opportunity presents itself. Some missions also involve AI companions, but honestly, they're useless. They always get destroyed by boss units in a matter of seconds. Their only tactic is to yell Banzai and run straight forward to their death. So not only will replaying missions yield parts, but also you can S rank them as well. This seems to keep me as well as the mega completionists out there busy for days. Minds me of Armor Core 3 and trying to get an S rank on all the missions. The story is there and not intrusive, so you don't need to pay any attention to it. While it isn't the main focus, it does a good job giving you a sense of reason and purpose with every mission. There definitely is an overarching plot that makes sense unlike some of the Armor Core games that just have loosely connected missions. Which is a lot of them. The missions are nice and short which helps to keep the pace up and prevent tedium from sitting in. What does become repetitive quickly however are the maps. You literally fight in the same few areas of the city throughout the whole game. There's also the arena in a few missions, but that's about it. While the single player experience is great and all, this could have easily benefited from some multiplayer. Heck, since there are missions that feature arena combat, this feels like a missed opportunity. Either co-op or competitive play could have done this game wonders. But let's be honest, it's hard to be unsatisfied after only paying $15. For the amount you pay and the content and gameplay on offer, I can't say no to this title. It's also incredibly smooth and stable, which is rare for ports like this. I highly recommend it to any mech fan out there, as well as all the loot horrors of the world. Now all this talk about mechs and customization got me itching to play Armor Core again. I wonder whatever happened to that series. Hmm. Maybe I'll take a look at it in the future. As always, thanks for watching, 
and this is Powerhouse, signing off. Yeah.